Go, go, go. Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John. Hey guys, it is New Guitar Thursday. Yeah, he's in go, go, go. Hi, guys. Uh, welcome back to another Takeover Tuesday. I hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend. Um, it was great to go visit family up in uh, St. Jude, my wife's, St. Joe. My wife's family's up there. And so we went up there for a few days. And then John and Jason were camping down in Branson, so we went down there and visited with them. And uh, got some yard work done. So it was a great day to kind of have a, a weekend off, but also remembering all the veterans that had uh, passed in war or otherwise anyone that served. Uh, thank you all so much for your service. Um, it was great weather for uh, Memorial Day weekend. The camping was excellent because it, it was like 60 degrees at night and didn't get over like 83 in the day. It was perfect weather. Hope you guys had a great weekend as well. Um, we're back at it in the shop. So it's a uh, Tuesday. It feels like Monday because we started a, a day late this week. We got new store hours. The store is now open Monday through Thursday uh, till seven o'clock. So we just uh, cut off an hour at the end of the day. Uh, just let the, the crew have a little bit more time with their family. And normally sales kind of taper off after that seven o'clock time anyway, and lessons are wrapping up. So from now on, we're open till seven o'clock uh, during the week and then six o'clock on Friday and Saturday. So keep that in mind if you need to call the shop or if you're visiting us from out of state, which we got some folks right now that were visiting us from, uh, or that just left the shop that were visiting us from out of state. Um, guys, we've had a question of how do you travel with an instrument, and uh, we got some answers for you. What do you need? What kind of gear? What to expect? What do you do? Hinkley's got a question. Real quick, I do not have a question, oh. but you should tell these people that I am here. Hello. Hinkley is here monitoring I'm all here. you guys' comments and questions and uh, thumbs ups and, and smiley faces. All the emojis, she actually reenacts them here for me. Yes. So, uh, I That's appreciate actually all true. Those. <laughs> Uh, just to welcome everybody in, Mr. Doug Moon says hello from Hi, downtown Moon. Pacific, Missouri. From Pacific, yeah, I've been yep. through there a number of times. Randy, hello from south side of Springfield. Alex says hello from the middle of Toronto. Definitely tell us where you're watching from. We love to know that. That's really cool. The middle of Toronto. The middle this of Toronto. That's very precise. Not on that any is very the precise. Uh, this is the core where it all began, was right there in the middle. Um, but anyway, back to the question on travel, guys. How do you travel? What kind of gear do you need to travel with your instrument? And uh, what to expect when you get to the airport? We have traveled extensively on uh, airplanes as the Chapmans when we were touring a lot, especially in those last years. A lot of them would be complete opposite parts of the coast, and we just gave up on trying to drive those. So we started flying a lot more. Um, good news is the TSA, actually it wasn't the TSA, the Musicians Union won a lawsuit against the TSA and uh, U.S. Airlines about uh, instruments, Travel, uh, musicians traveling with professional instruments. The airline was only willing to insure them up to a point that wouldn't even cover most musicians' instruments if they got broken. So because of that, because the airlines weren't willing to actually reimburse you for the value of your instrument, they made a rule that you have to have the right to carry it on with you. And that doesn't mean pay for another seat. It means you get to carry that in and put it in the overhead. Now, there are problems with this. Obviously, uh, when we were touring, uh, Jason normally didn't fly with his bass, but he would have all the, the we have a rack that has all, all our, uh, our mixer in it, our in-ear monitors, all the stuff we had for PA, our microphones. Jason would carry that as his carry-on. That would take up a big portion of the carry overhead. Dad would have a banjo. John would have a full, you know, dreadnought guitar, and I would have my mandolin. So it's four pretty big pieces of gear that we would always take on the plane with us. The secret to it, especially if you can get some of the airline uh, credit cards where you can get uh, priority uh, seating, you'll get on there early, get that overhead. Sometimes you're going to get to the actual gangway, and that's the agent that normally tries to stop you with your instrument and says you can't take that on the plane. And you can print out that uh, the TSA settlement where they say that you are required to, they are required to allow you to carry on your instrument. So you can go do a Google search for TSA Musicians Union uh, Carry On Instruments. You can print that off, show that to them. Most of the time we just say, no, the TSA lost the lawsuit. We're allowed to bring this on. We always put it in the overhead. If the overhead is full and they don't have room, you can put it in the front cloak, coat closet where all the, uh, the pilots and uh, stewardesses and all that put their, their jackets and coats. Another question? 
just to welcome some more people in. And you do have one very specific question that we will get to. Uh, Daryl is watching from Chestnut Ridge, Missouri. Oh, Jamie from Oregon. And Jamie from Oregon. Guitar Zana from Montana. Not who I would be expecting from Montana to be that, watching that's this. That's the name of a, a band right there, Guitar Zana from Montana. Guitar Zana from Montana. Greetings from Manchester, yeah. Tennessee. Hello from Florida and hello from Ohio. That is awesome. Thank you all for watching. Yes, guys. Did thank you, want... you so much for tuning in to the uh, Takeover Tuesday with your host, Jeremy Chapman, with John trying to interrupt our, our well oiled machine. He here. was mildly interrupting. Show John over there. He's interrupting. He doesn't have a mic on, so he's not allowed to talk. Yay! All right. Do we, Did you want this we question? question? Okay, we do have one very specific question. It's on a tangent. So, Jeremy, could you explain why would you ever want a mandolin with different woods besides spruce and maple? Uh, it's the same Hello one. from New York City. That's what they added on the end. I, I will say it's less so than guitars, where people are willing to experiment and do some different wood combinations. Because, and it's like violins. Your violins have pretty much settled on maple back and sides, spruce top. Then you get some variant in what type of maple, if it's sugar maple, if it's uh, tiger stripe maple, maple, if it's, you know, all kinds of different styles of maple, bird's eye. And then also spruce, you can do Adirondack spruce, Sitka spruce. Um, that's 98% of mandolins, just like fiddles and violins, they kind of settled on a really good combination. I think because it's such a smaller chamber that a lot of the other tone woods don't really respond as much in that small chamber. So I have played some really good walnut back and sides mandolins. They don't have quite the projection. They seem a little bit stiff, so they just kind of are a little bit duddy, it seems to me. I played some cedar top mandolins that have sounded really good and warm. Again, if you're looking for that really punchy projection, uh, spruce is just going to produce that, that tone a lot more. Our spectrum of tonal changes is quite a bit different than what you get with a dreadnought or smaller body guitar, where there's just a lot more effect that the wood has on it, and you can experiment a lot more and kind of tweak the tone you're going for. There's just a lot less of that the ability in that small uh, chamber to do it. It's same with ukuleles. You know, they, they don't do too many options with ukuleles or violins. Just that smaller body chamber limits you a little bit. So you'll find, I'd say, 95 to 98 percent of your instruments are just going to be maple back and side, spruce top, and then you just get a slight variant on which maple or which spruce. So I hope that answers that a little bit. But I have seen some people experiment, and you know, a company that has done a lot is Weber. Weber mandolins, and uh, part of that's the two old hippies. They, they do a lot of the uh, sustainable woods, um, so they'll do a lot of that. This is, oh, uh, we got a new bourgeois, uh, the M5A. This is still maple back and sides and spruce top, but it's all tor torrified, so that's, that's one wood option that's becoming a lot more popular on mandolin. And the cool thing with a lot of mandolins is they're torrifying everything, back and sides. A lot of the guitars aren't torrifying the back and sides. Also, the neck on this is torrified, so fully torrified. And it, it also brings out a beautiful color to that. Uh, no stain, that's just the torrification of the wood. Gives it that really beautiful amber honey color. Um, We've got a hello from Yuma, Arizona. Hello from Yuma, Arizona. Evan says, John, Jeremy, and Jason of the Chapmans are great musicians and great people, too. Oh shucks. Thank that's you so much. That's too nice. I appreciate that. Uh, he Alex says, doesn't know us personally. <laughs> Alex says, lots of old Gibsons are made of different woods. There's uh, some variation. There's, it's, some there's variation. Still, I mean, I got right behind me. Uh, this is an actual built by Orville Gibson. It's got a walnut back and sides on that one, uh, spruce top on it. Um, so yeah, he did experiment, and a lot of that was at that time, those early Gibsons, they were using a lot of the woods that was available up there in Michigan, which was kind of a factory town for furniture. They were building tons of furniture up there. So wood supplies that were used in furniture, which are your walnuts and oaks and stuff like that, they had a lot of that available. I haven't really played, I think I played it, maybe one or two man ones made of oak, but that was like local builders that were experimenting with it. And then Duke just said, fantastic answer. Thank you. You're welcome. So you Thank covered. You so so uh, back to the flights. Getting on the plane, obviously, if you can get on the plane early, you're going to have more overhead space. Get it up there. Get it into that closet if they don't have enough space for your large guitar or banjo. Uh, the funny thing, this last trip we took over to Bend, Oregon. John took his guitar up to uh, the two old hippies, uh, Bedell uh, Workshop, to have them kind of analyze the guitar. We're doing a cool project with them. He got it in the front closet for the, the pilot's closet, basically. And it's, it's one of the rollover ones, like a garage door. And they got it shut, but then when they went to reopen it, it got stuck on John's case. And they delayed the flight for about 30 minutes trying to get that open. And then they said, let's just take off. We'll get it in our next landing. We'll land there, and we'll have the, the maintenance guys try to fix it. They came on the plane, took about another 20 minutes. And finally, John was on there with him and said, guys, it's in a flight case, which that's the next thing we're going to cover. You're not going to hurt the case. If anything, you're going to break your door. 
So just go at it. And the guy just finally slammed it and got it open. But uh, two delayed flights, thanks to John's case. So uh, be, be cautious of that. Make sure they pack it with the head leaning away from the door, not towards the door. Be cautious um, of flying with John, really. Yeah, and also, yeah. yeah, be prepared to be delayed with flying with John. So that brings us to our next thing. A good flight case. If you are going to fly, it's very risky to go with a gig bag because there are those times that you're going to be on a plane that doesn't have room in the overhead and they don't have room in the front closet. And then what do you do? You're stuck. If you have it in the gig bag, they're going to want to gate check it. They're still not going to be gentle with that. They, I've seen them down there with a gate check guitar, still grab it and just chuck it into the baggage hold. And then in that baggage hold, it's shaking around in the plane. And then it also, you know, when they unload it on their little conveyor belt, it can fall off. So a flight case is very important. They are not inexpensive, but if you have a valuable guitar or if you just have a guitar that's kind of an heirloom for your family, it is worth the investment. We're talking twelve to eighteen hundred dollars for a full fiberglass case. We, you guys, if you've watched the channel, check out. We did. We've done some experiments, and we're still doing more of them, comparing the Kelton cases to the Hoffy cases. Hoffy is going to be a uh, uh, what is it called? Carbon. carbon fiber. Carbon fiber versus. Um, is that right? Yes. So. All right, I, I'm getting the two confused. I think carbon fiber would be the... Sure. <laughs> what, John? The Caltons. What is the difference between the Kelt... What is Kelt made of? Carbon fiber or fiberglass? There you go. You're right. Kelt, carbon fiber for the Hoffy cases, fiberglass for the Kelton cases. And we're doing a big bunch of experiments that we'll never do to your banjo. We drug them behind horses. We put them in a swimming pool. We shot Tannerite at them. Um, or exploded tanner right, right behind them, doing all kinds of things to compare how well they protect it. The main thing, therefore, is protecting it on flights. And we have flown to Europe, and again, on those international flights, they rarely let you check, put it in your overhead. You're most likely going to be checking it through the, con uh, the baggage conveyor and all that, or maybe a gate check. So a good carbon fiber or fiberglass case is an essential thing. And also, when it, the guitar's at home, we had a customer in here that he had a guitar that was only worth about $1,200. But it was his dad's guitar. He loved it. He never wanted anything to happen to it. So he invested in a case more expensive than the value of the guitar just to make sure nothing happened to that guitar. And, you know, for him, it was worth it. For me, the other thing is it's a long-term investment. I've had a Kelton case for, I got it when I was about 18 years old. So a long time, let's say a long time, 23 years, 25 years. I've had that case and it's still, it's got nicks and scratches and all that, but it is still protecting the mandolin inside of it like nobody's business. So if you have a valuable instrument or one that you just could not bear something happening to it, worth looking into one of those cases. Do you have any on hand? Good question. No, we don't. Um, <laughs> I think we are out of all of those right now. We have them on order. It just takes a little while for them to build them. Um, great cases. If you want to get one on here, they do take them a while. They're built down in Austin, Texas, the Kelton cases. Hoffy, we haven't had in for a while, but we can order you one of those as well if you're interested. Um, but we do, I think if you go to our website, you can search for Kelton, and Ho or Kelton cases and see some of what we have hot on there and some of the options. And you can also just contact us and we'll get you pricing on that. There's, the cool thing also is they're custom building each and every one of those. So you can build it to your, your taste. You can choose what color interior you want, what kind of exterior color. You can do paint, paint splatter. You can do uh, sparkle and some, some glitter. We have the oh yeah, we have a little, look at this guys. Thank you, Hinkley. Here are your options, guys. Hello, these are your interior colors. So you can choose from all these different interiors, a very nice kind of soft velour to protect the guitar. And they are all been tested with all the finishes so they don't uh, stick to any finishes. Um, then for your exteriors, you just have so many options. These are the glitter options. You can just go through the line, pick out whatever you want. Because they are, again, custom building these one at a time. Look at Jeremy, that right build, yeah. your, build your favorite. What are, you, what are you picking? My favorite. What are you going with? I think I would go for a sparkle. Um, okay. We have done this seafoam green right here that I just love. On a full case, that looks great. Uh, yeah, that's the sea green. That one looked awesome. I might go for maybe a little darker green. Forest green would look nice. Okay. Um, so I would go for like a really nice sparkly, flashy exterior. That gold we've also done. Looks like a clump. And for an interior, I'm probably a little more traditional. Would maybe use a gray or a this greenish blue okay. color, whatever you call that. Those are some yeah. solid picks. <laughs> Thank you. I just had to know. You just had to know what I would go with. Yeah. So that's the, the second essential thing. If you're flying, make sure you have a good quality case and are protecting your instrument. Other than that, guys, uh, humidification is really important because whatever environment you're going into is probably different than the one you're flying out of. We used to live in Denver, Colorado, and we would travel to every other, especially we toured a lot in Missouri. 
and we come from that negative <laughs> humidity. Um, now it's so much easier to do that. We really love the, uh, the humida packs from Dedaria or the uh, Bovida packs, and those keep your case at a 45 degree, uh, between 45 and 50 percent, I said degree, 45 and 50 percent humidity. And then when you get to that next environment, your, your mandolin or guitar is still in that right humidity level. They'll adjust a little as you're playing them, but it's not as drastic as if you just let it kind of uh, sit in the case, or not humidifying it in the case. So do we have any other questions so far with travel? The other thing you're going to want is an airplane ticket. So make sure you book one of those and, uh, and underwear, extra underwear and toothbrush and toothpaste. Yep, don't we're forget that. all the things you want to carry with you travel. Pretty sure that's it. Okay. No, we were just thinking. Uh, Phone chargers. What's some good advice to people that maybe have not traveled with their instrument? What worries would they have? Do you have any uh, horror stories of traveling? Well, there's been horror stories, yeah. Uh, and there, for a long time, Mark Leaf cases were the, the main one to go with, and they were just an uh, early version of a fiberglass case, but it uh, was. The material wasn't puncture proof. It was very strong for anything impacting it. But I think it was Allison Brown's banjo, which you guys saw when we did a, a thing with Allison at uh, Merlefest. She had an international flight with her banjo and something punctured right through the case and I think snapped her neck in half and got to the, the event. Um, a story for us, John, and this is where the case did its job, but it shows what an airline will do. If you watch those videos, we are rough on those Calvin cases. We flew with one over to Amsterdam the first time we flew over. It might have been the second time we flew over, and John had his guitar, <coughs> excuse me, a 1940 D18 in his Calton case, and somehow the airline, I don't know if it was a hydraulic door or what, but right on the neck of the case, so right here on the body of it, it completely crushed that in about an inch down each side of it, and we were sure his guitar was destroyed when we saw that. First, we're waiting at the baggage for this guitar to show up. It never arrives, and then finally we see it being carted over to the damaged baggage area. So panic struck John pretty quickly with his prized guitar. Opened the case with heart beating very fast. The guitar was fine. The case obviously took all the brunt of it and damage. But to think on a, on a side sheer area of the guitar like that, that they could damage it that much, it shows what an airline is capable. It's like they almost take it as a challenge. Can let's I break see this? How, let's see how mad I can mess up you their stuff. You guys think we yeah. can't break this? Let's see. <laughs> No, so that was his, that was a horror story that turned out all right because we had the right case. Was it his D18? Yeah. Oh, dang. 1940 D18. I think it was his first major flight with it, and the case did its job. Carol was asking how much for a Calton case. Calton a... mandolin cases are between eight and twelve hundred dollars, depending on which option you go with. Again, these are not inexpensive, but they are going to last you probably a this lifetime. This is for a single O single guitar o, size, I believe. They're twelve to eighteen, and there's different options. For the case, uh, when you do the different interiors and exteriors, um, let us know. Give us a call. We can price one out for sure for you. Um, I cannot say enough about them. All of us, Dad, John, me, um, we all bought our cases at the same time, and this was when they were being built back up in Canada. And this was, uh, it had to have been 25 to, gosh, almost 30 years ago that we ordered these cases. And as soon as we went touring, we're like, we've got to take care of our instruments. And believe me, we've, we've had some, we used to have, we used our Sprinter van, which has a very tall back door, and we would stuff that full of instruments. And always the last one up there was my mandolin. And that's probably about eight to 10 feet off the ground. And one of the shows, we, Jason just opened that back door and slam down that mandolin case comes and hits the ground hard as a, you know, it, it sounded awful. Open it up, the mandolin's fine, still in tune. So the cases are built to be, to protect your instrument. It absolutely, one of those events happen, you'd be like, I'm so glad I bought this, this case to protect it. So they're not inexpensive, but for good reason. They're built excellent, and they're built one by one down in Austin, Texas now. So and check out Calton Cases. They, they got video of how they build those. It's pretty incredible. They put a lot of time and care into how they build the interiors, how they match everything. The handles even are the stitched leather. that They have a shop down there custom making those handles for them. Uh, they're just excellent, excellent cases, and we can price one of those out for you. It, it would be the one required item if I'm ever flying and carrying my instruments to have one of those with me. Nice. Carol just said it's fun to hear some family traveling stories. Oh, we, Absolutely. We have a lot that we're not allowed to tell on here, but we'll <laughs> maybe tune into Shop Talk tomorrow. We got Shop Talk at noon. We'll tell definitely. some more road stories from, from the Chapman's ex escapades on the road. Um, there were some definitely fun ones. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of adventures out there. Um, one of them, my mandolin, didn't survive. I think that's when I actually, for a little while, traveled with it in a gig bag. I'm thinking, all right, normally it's in our van. It's pretty safe. We're not traveling very much. Again, something, it fell over or fell and the scroll broke off. Very common thing for mandolins to happen on the headstock 
Monroe toured for probably about five years before getting that fixed. Um, Thiele's gone, I don't think his lower even broke off the, the scroll on that. So a very common piece to break off, appendage to break off of those. I experienced that as well. It was a little sickening to see it. It just, it's almost like a hand missing or something. You pick up somebody's, it's just a missing appendage laying there on the ground. Uh, but we got that glued back up on my sandbush model, and as you can hardly tell, it was broken. This is a really good question for upcoming stuff. Are we expecting the Eastman shipment for this Thursday show? Yes, we are. Hopefully. <laughs> I would say yes, except it was supposed to be here last Thursday or Wednesday, and they delayed it, and then we thought because of the holiday, they delayed it again. It's supposed to be delivered today, and we haven't heard anything about it. So maybe tomorrow, in the middle here. of our live stream, it will be here. Most likely. A new guitar Thursday would be awesome because I think we have like 40-some pieces, some cool ones in there. Oh, yeah. It would be a great shipment to have. We just did a really cool review video today for the, are we allowed to talk about that? We're going to talk about it anyway. We got I the new, we, yeah, we, we talk talked about, about it. it. We, it we at, didn't show it NAMM. off, but. Yeah, we got the uh, Bourgeois. These are the uh, Country Boys. So it's going to be the Mahogany Back and Sides version of the Touchstone guitars. So the Bourgeois Touchstone Country Boys, uh, we got to play those next door and make a review video of those. Can't wait to get those in the shop as well because they sound Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. Any update on Bourgeois F-Style mandolins? No. Um, they said uh, they said uh, the midsummer is what they were expecting. Well, I think July is what they were aiming for at NAM. So let's hope, fingers crossed, because they have them. They said they had some in the warehouse ready to ship. I think they're just waiting. They don't want to ship a bunch out and then not be able to get that second run of them out because they know they'll probably sell pretty quickly. Uh -huh. So they want to have enough that they can kind of keep supply supply chain going. We um, did just get in two A-styles. We did just get in two A-styles. Corey had handed one to me in this live stream. Both sound great again. If anybody's looking for an A-style M5A, one of the best mandolins you can get for that price. I know a lot of you guys are still waiting for the F-style and they are expected soon. I've played a number of them and I can't wait to get them in the shop because they sound and look incredible, and I think they're going to be a great seller. I think that should be right. it. And look what we're doing here, guys. See the laser? We got, uh, we're got we expanding our banjo wall. We essentially doubled the amount of banjos we're going to hang in here. Um, moved the violin rack. We used to have that violin rack over here in the corner, and we moved the violins over to the other side of the store. We're always looking for more ways to pack more instruments into a small space. Um, got our ukuleles now on this tree, a ukulele tree. You could plant one of those, by the way. We, we sell ukulele tree seeds. If you guys want to buy those, just, we'll sell them by the pack. And you get a variety of different uh, ukuleles that grow off that tree. Really? Yeah. It takes 10 years to maturity, but it's totally worth buying those seeds. And you let us know 10 years from now which ukuleles you've grown. Um, but no, yeah, we're going to double up our banjo wall. And have. I think it adds another 18 banjos to that wall. So it's time to start ordering some banjos, you know. All right, guys, I think that's it for me. I got a mandolin lesson starting in five minutes. Uh, let me know if you have any questions tomorrow for the live stream. I think Hinkley's going to be putting out our, our questions of the week and all that during the live. And of course. We're going to be taking some of your comments and requests and doing them during the show. I think the brothers Robertson won't be performing tomorrow, but they're going to be stopping by to talk about their benefit concert going on this Saturday. Absolutely. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow at noon Central Standard Time for Shop Talk. And then John will be here Thursday for New Guitar Thursday with hopefully new guitars. 3.30. <coughs> and we do have a bunch of new Ferks that came in too. So. Oh yeah, we got some We got some new guitars in. We We're just like fingers crossed for this Eastman shipment, you know. All right, guys, All thanks right. so much. Uh, let us know any of your travel horror stories that you've had out on the road. Absolutely. We love to hear those, and, and we're sick to the stomach when we hear them too. So we'll see you guys next week.